Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, welcome back to the vlog. We're here at Yaskini Temple. We're here for the Rights for Good Crops Festival. But before we get to the temple, you know what it's time for. It's time for that history lesson. So let's give you a little bit of history about Yaskini Temple. Yaskini Shrine, located in Tokyo, has a deep history dating back to 1869 when Emperor Meiji established it to honor those who fought for Japan. Over time, it has become a significant site for remembering the sacrifices of millions of individuals in various conflicts since the Meiji Restoration. While some visit the shrine to pay respects to their ancestors and the nation's heroes, it has stirred controversy due to its inclusion of a Class A war criminals from World War II. This decision has strained relations with neighboring countries like China and South Korea, who view it as a glorification of Japan's militaristic past. Despite the disagreements, many Japanese still see Yaskini as a place for quiet reflection and remembrance. It serves as a reminder of Japan's complex history and prompts the nation to confront its past while striving for peace and reconciliation in the present and future. Alright guys, we're at the main entrance of uh, Yaskini Temple. Uh, the way I got here is I uh, got off at Lidebashi Station and then I walked, uh, well Google Maps says it's like 15 minutes but it was more like 10. Um, this is like the biggest entrance gate thing I've ever seen at a temple. This thing's, this thing's so tall and just giant. And this, there's this statue up here that I, I've been wanting to look at. <laughs> it's, it's probably made of copper, just like the Buddha. Um, let's take a look here. Um, there's probably a little bit of information on there that we can take a look. Here's a little better view of the entrance. So like I said in the history, this, this temple is a, a memorial for the people that have uh, fallen in uh, wars, uh, in the Japanese wars. So uh, these are all like memorial sites. Um, you know, like I said, there's a bunch of controversy about this place. But, uh, you know, I've only lived here for 10 years, so I don't really understand that. But, um, you know. All right, let's get to this uh, statue here. He's got two Katana swords. Obviously a samurai. Let's see who he is here. There's a little information underneath the statue. There's, a, there's another entrance here, but I believe that's just for cars. Let's take a look here. Omura Masujiro was essential in Japan during the Meiji Restoration, especially in its government and military. He came from a family of samurais. At first, he studied to become a doctor, but he got involved with politics and he wanted to strengthen Japan. He helped the Satsumo Domain, an important area, by teaching them new ways to fight using Western ideas. This helped improve Japan's army and set a stage for Japan to become a modern country. Even though some people didn't like the changes he brought, Omura is still remembered for the strengthening Japan's military during the Meiji era. All right guys, this is another uh, place inside of the temple area. This is a memorial fountain, statue of a mother offering water Many of the war deads longed for their mothers and pure water at the last moment. This statue represents the, the loving 
mother offering pure water in an abstract form. The outer wall is a statue that represents a simple atmosphere seen in a traditional Japanese shrine. Stones collected from the battle sites are exhibits at the back. Okay. These unique ceramic tiles show cherry blossoms made from clay from all parts of Japan. People from each area dedicated the clay to honor spirits at Yasukuni Jinja for its 150th anniversary. Using old methods, the tiles respect these spirits and show deep respect for those who have passed away. They're placed in the sole comforting garden to help people find their way to the main sanctuary. We have a statue right here. It's actually not a statue, it's a stone wall. Let's see what this is. Oh, okay. So, this area is a monument for the fallen soldiers. It's all over here at the entrance. There's a cool one over here too. Let's take a look. I don't know, these are all like individual ones. Not sure what this is. Okay. Well, at least this place has a bunch of everything on here. Okay, so this is stones from the old battlefields. Senseki no Ishi. So Senseki no Ishi means stones from old battlefields. That's kind of cool. I've never seen that before. Taking stones. Well, I think these are stones too. <laughs> I like how this uh, this temple has uh, pretty much everything written in uh, English as well. So it's Japanese and English. So I mean, if you're a foreigner, you can come here and you can understand everything. And I think that's very, very important. You know, like when I went to Meiji Jingu or like other temples, like most of them, like they don't, on the most, like the most important things that they have uh, English writings and stuff on it. But other than that, I mean, it's all written in Japanese. And then, you know, like I've, I've only lived here for 10 years and there's like 25,000 kanji. Like there's no way I can learn everything. And then like, you know, each kanji has like different meanings and this and that. It's very, very difficult to learn um, to write in Japanese. You know, I can uh, read and write hiragana and katakana, but the kanji is just, it's very, very, very difficult. These, they're everywhere. Oh, this is cool. I didn't see this. Okay, let's see what this... It's like a, f it's a statue of a family here. That's cool. I don't know. This, this one's not written in English, so I'm not sure what this one is. On June 15, 1904, a Japanese ship called Hitachimura carried soldiers during a war between Russia and Japan. Suddenly, it was attacked by Russian vessels in foggy seas. The Japanese commander decided to burn the army's flag and kill himself rather than surrender. The boat sank and over a thousand people died, including the commander. 
Every year since then, on June 15th, a ceremony is held to remember those who died in Okay, so we're on our way into the temple here. Um, it's the, like I said earlier, it's, it's the Rites of Good Crops Festival. I've never been to it before, so I'm not sure what it is. We're gonna find out. Um, I don't think it's gonna be like my last vlog at Meiji Shrine. I don't think it's gonna be like people holding stuff on their shoulders and stuff like that. Um, I did read a little bit about it and I, oh, it's those, see, in that last video, it's a better shot of the, these guys come to all these festivals because these guys uh, are part of the Shint, they believe in Shinto, so, all right, let's, let's cross the street here, let's get, make our way in here. So uh, right now it's currently, it's like 9.15. The, um, the festival starts at uh, 10 o'clock. So I just came a little bit early. So there's not too many people. I don't know, I mean, I don't know how many people. Because last week there was just so many people at Meiji, Meiji Jingu. So, um, all right. Let's go over here. All right, like I said, there's, there's one of these in every single temple. So, um, always, um, Okay, so this one, they don't have a thing to grab it, like a little cup thing. So they just have this thing dripping right here. Okay, so you always grab the water with your right hand. Right hand, and then wash your hands. I'm not gonna put, like I said, I'm not gonna put the water inside my mouth, because I don't know where it's coming from. And it's most likely tap water, so. Um, so, I'll explain it to you a little more. If they do have the cup thing, so what you do is you grab it with your right hand, grab it with your right hand, and then you would put the water on your left hand and then wash your hands. And then with the water left over inside of the cup, you want to tip it over like this and make sure the water drips down the handle so it cleans it off for the next person. And then that's the right way to do it. Um, uh, what's it called? If you go online, it'll, it'll show you all those things. I'll just gonna explain it to you myself, but. All right, here we go here. So this is a little bit different from Meiji Jingu. This is my first time here too, so. Here we got uh, Nihonchu, but I hear drums. I hear drums, so there's gonna be, maybe there will be something uh, people do in the shoulder things. I'm not sure. Oh, dude, look at this thing, these doors. I wonder if they close these at night. Oh, it's all gold. Look at that, it's cool. Maybe it's nice. So he asked me if I was live or not, because you're not allowed to shoot anything live. Um, you can shoot stuff for your personal stuff. You can put it on YouTube and stuff like that. That's no problem. But uh, they're really strict with like photography and stuff like that at these places. So um, just be sure when you come. Um, if they ask you, don't take pictures. Just don't take pictures. If you're able to take a picture, then you know you can take a picture. But um, once I get past this, they're probably going to tell me to turn it off. 
but um, we'll see how far we can get. Okay, so this place, um, it also has a museum, um, but um, I found out that uh, you're not allowed to uh, take videos and stuff inside of the whole exhibit. So, um, unfortunately, I'm not gonna go to it. I wanted to go inside to be able to show it to you guys, but um, it's just uh, not possible. So, this is the museum over here, and I believe it opens at 10 and it closes at four o'clock. So if you are interested in that, it's a memorial for the, you know, the, the people that have passed away in, in war. Okay, so let's make our way back over here. So just like any any museum, like I said, they have omamoris. You can buy little um, good luck charms. All right, let's see how far we can get in here with the camera. I'm just not gonna say anything. Oh, dude, you can buy a bow and arrow. It's kind of cool. I forgot to explain. So, um, so over there, there's a little wooden box right before the temple. Um, what's it called? I forgot to explain that too in, in Meiji, at Meiji Jingu in the last vlog. But, um, so when you do put the coin in, you clap your hands twice and then you make your prayer for what you want, anything, and then you bow. So um, that's the process that you do it. Um, you can bow twice, but you, al you always clap twice. All right, so now we're gonna wait for that uh, festival here. We'll take a little bit more look at uh, these buildings over here. I'm not sure if you can walk on here. Yeah, it might might be sacred ground so I don't want to I don't want to what to call get in trouble here I mean you're not gonna get in trouble they're just gonna tell you that uh, you can't you can't go on there but you know you just want to follow the rules um, especially when you, you're a foreigner um, you don't want to um, break any of their uh, rules inside of a temple I mean it's the same thing at a church I mean you're not gonna do something um, that's uh, you know, that's disrespectful at a church. All right, so at this temple, these are the white doves of the Yaskuni Shrine. The priests at the shrine are quite successful breeding hundreds of pairs of white doves and have noticed them around the shrine many times before, but never seen them enjoying the first days of spring quite like this. If you visit the shrine, Keep an eye out for these birds. That's what it says, so. So the priests, so the priests of this place, they breed these doves. That is just really cool. There's, there's, there's hundreds of them. They're all inside of this. They have their own house. They just keep coming out of here. Look. It's really cool. these these black vans so what they are as I'm reading it right now it says sometimes some of the more right-wing members of the Japanese society feel the need to announce their beliefs to the public they do this by in a matter that is otherwise unlike Japanese society they make lots of noise the typical black van is equipped with loudspeakers Japanese flags, imperial seals, and military flags, aka rising sun flag. They usually pick crowded areas to blast their propaganda to the public. 
They also sometimes park in front of the Russian embassy. Okay, so they um, they go around um, expressing their political views. But I think it has to do with like, they want it to keep it traditional old ways. I think that's what it is. Daini Tori, oh, okay. That first one's Daichi, meaning it's the first, um, first Shinto Shrine Arch, and this is the second one. I believe that's what it means. Or this is the second Shinto Shrine Arch ever. I'm not sure about that, but look at this thing. It's so old. It's like weathered and. I'm surprised these things just can survive. I mean, like earthquakes, and I mean, oh, it's crazy. So I think this is the starting of the, the ceremony. say much right now. I'm just gonna let you guys watch. a little bit different from last week. There's another set of them coming right here. over there. They're just coming to pay their respects. So, um, I forgot to let you guys know this, but um, when you guys go to any temple, you guys want to walk on the right side and the left side. 
not in the middle. I totally forgot about it because um, only the gods are supposed to walk in the middle of the road. Or uh, this right here. So like right here, as you can see, either walking on the left or the right. There's some people that don't obey by it, but the people do that do, they walk on the left and the right. As you can watch, see these guys right here. They came in on the left, they're coming out on the right. Um, only gods walk in the middle, so. It's a festival day, but it's not like it was from last week. What it is, is today, um, uh, just normal people come and they pay res res their respects for the rights of goods. And then uh, the reason why those guys are here is uh, like the kind of dressed up in soldiers because this is a, like I said, it's a memorial for the uh, soldiers. So um, yeah, I thought it was gonna be kind of like last week, but I just asked the security guard and it's not. So um, ma, I came and paid my respect. I bought some Oma Moris. Um, I bought a uh, wooden arrow um, that you put in front of, inside of the entrance of your house to ward off evil. And then I bought a uh, one for good health for children, for my stepkids, for EJ and Lay. And then I also bought one for my wife to, that she can put inside of her wallet for warding off evil. So, all right, so that's what it was all about. All right, guys, we're gonna end the vlog here. Um, I enjoyed coming to Yaskinio Temple. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. Suzuki Styles on YouTube. Go to my Instagram, Suzuki Styles. Like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Leave a comment on both. I'd like to thank you again. Also, please go to my website at www.suzukireviews.com to make your trip to Tokyo as easy as possible. Again, always thank you for watching. Suzuki out.